Welcome back, Mouseketeers. I am Christina Kay, and this is my twin sister, Melissa Kay, and we have a lot to talk about. First, I just want to say sorry for the lack of videos lately. It was just a whirlwind between two Disney trips, Comic-Con, work stuff, knee stuff, then um, my MacBook decided to die, so I had to get a new one, and then I had new camera issues. But we're back. We're back. Um, and we've got a lot to discuss. Let's start. Let's Let's take it back to the beginning of September when we went for uh, a little sisters weekend. It was the two of us and then my one of my best friends, Victoria, and her sister, and we had a great weekend. We did food and wine, which I'll link that video up in the eye and down below. What was your favorite thing from food and wine? I think hands down, it's not even a question. Yeah. It was the pork slider from Hawaii. Yeah. Um, that was so delicious. I actually found a recipe online oh, did you? from the Disney Parks blog and I will be attempting to remake them at home. Mm -hmm. That's how much I like them because <laughs> I don't cook. <laughs> we actually said that the thing that you like the most and then the thing that I like the most was that chicken teriyaki bun from Japan. Mm -hmm. We actually went back for two weeks later. Yep. And we only had like a half hour to get both of them and get back to the front of the park, but we made it happen and it was worth it because we were dreaming about that stuff for two weeks. So we were really happy to spend some more time and do food and wine because that's not something we normally get to yeah. do. And especially October, I feel like we're usually in Disneyland for like September, mm -hmm. October, not necessarily Disney World. So that was great. Um, we also went on Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, which I will link that preview. We did the annual pass mm -hmm. holder preview that trip. I'll link that video down below. Now, I want to explain that because yes. we we were kind of in a whirlwind that day. We That was our travel day. It was mm -hmm. our first day. We were with two people who weren't familiar with Disney. So there was a lot going on. And then just the two of us went into the preview. And we weren't prepared for it to be a 3D attraction. And the combo of the mask and the glasses, we missed a lot of the attraction. Even on the, on the preview video that I filmed, we missed quite a few things because of the blurriness mm -hmm. or whatever. Two weeks later, when we went back down, we did it again, and now we love the attraction. Yes, but the side note there is we do the attraction without the 3D yes. glasses. So we'll ride it, and we won't wear the glasses, and it is a thousand times better. So much better. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, 3D glasses are always so big on me. They don't fit my face right. I always end yeah, up seeing, this is like, double. Even before the pandemic, so, like, not yeah, including with the mask. Then you throw the mask, and it's, like, it's a blurry. whole other yeah. issue. It was foggy, um, not blurry. Yeah, and I feel like you miss a lot of the non-screen stuff. Well, the glasses are so big, so for me, yeah, like, like I goggles. can't see what's going on, like, mm -hmm. outside in the peripheral. Yeah. <laughs> so without wearing them, you get right. to see everything, and it's just a much better experience. I take the glasses, and there's two scenes that I've figured out where you kind of need the glasses for. I know you didn't put mm -hmm. them on, but I did. And I was it was enjoyable for me. It was so much more enjoyable. We did it twice on the second mm -hmm. trip we went on, and... We now love it. Yes. So I'm happy to report that because it's funny. We were talking to Betty from Betty Says <laughs> that night that we went um, for the annual pass holder preview. And she's like, I loved it. I went on it three times. And we were like, you could have gone on it more than once. <laughs> it didn't even occur to us. No, because we were like, there was just so much going on that day. So, and you might even tell from the video, we're a little <laughs> flustered at times. Um, but we're happy that we enjoy that yes. attraction because we were both a little like it's one of my hearted. favorite movies. So to have yeah. a whole attraction, this whole like part of France dedicated to it, and then to be disappointed was really upsetting. Yeah. So I'm so glad that it's redeemed itself now, and I love it. Yes, we and I think the whole expansion, that whole area, the restroom was great. They mm -hmm. had that little crepery, which is really cute. Um, and it's so funny because every time we've gotten off the attraction, that little merch booth has been closed either for the <laughs> rain or it was late at night, whatever. But we finally were able to get some uh, Ratatouille merch, which we'll talk about in just a bit. So, and then you got to see Epcot Forever, which... Oh my god! I was sad for you because when I saw it in 2019, they had the part with like the ski jets and the kites. And you didn't get to see that, but you wouldn't have known anyway. Right, I didn't know anything. Yeah, different. because of those stupid harmonious barges. But the music, I mean, if you guys grew up with Epcot in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s and you didn't get a chance to see Epcot forever. I did put the the, the video with uh, food and wine. I do have it there, but if you want to see one with the kites, I'll try to find a video and maybe link that below for you guys too. Um, but it was just like the perfect way to end that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a big reason why she went on that trip. That's literally <laughs> why I went on the trip was to see Epcot forever. Yeah. Um, and I'm so glad I did because it was amazing. Yeah. I liked it so much better than Harmonious. Yeah, which, <laughs> which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, yeah. My one, like, weird thing with Epcot Forever was, like, the songs in it are amazing. Right. 
But why did, like, you have to have this child sing the songs? Yeah, I mean, and it's that kind of like, like Wishes, though, when you think about it. Because they have the, the, the voice, the little kid voice in Wishes, too. Yeah, I don't know. It just bothered me. Maybe but that was an original song. True. Maybe it was a way to, like, because kids, like, all that music's going to go in. Like, they're going to be like, mm. what? Whatever you know? the reason So was. maybe, I don't, I don't know. know. I really don't know why but they did still, that. But still, I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. I mean... It could just go into so many rants, because, like, even that incorporated Walt's, like, way more than anything for the 50th. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's a big... We've been getting a lot of questions about the 50th, so we'll talk about that in a minute. But I do want to also quickly say about that trip that we went on, that first one, was that we went to Hollywood Studios, and Victoria loves Star Wars, and she really wanted to do Rise of the Resistance. And you might remember from... I, I don't know what video it was that we did, and you were like, I don't get Rise of the Resistance. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it. So when my sister did Rise of the Resistance back in May, I think it was, Mm -hmm. Um, the first two, the pre-show and then the other part of the attraction, which I don't want to ruin for people who haven't been on, were down. So she literally just walked into where the stormtroopers are and got on the ride. Now, what do you think about it? Now, being able to do the whole thing, I can say that the ride isn't just a ride, it's an experience. experience. Totally different. They should not allow you to ride the ride without seeing it in its entirety. Because it really does create this whole experience Mm -hmm. for you. And I just think it's wrong if you can't ride the thing in its entirety. I heard, and let me know if you guys have experienced this, with Genie Plus now, if you're in the lightning lane and you're paying extra for this, you skip those first two things, which I think is that's Why on half earth? of the attraction. Why on earth yeah. would you do that? Yeah. Let me know in the comments below if you guys know anything about that, because that's yeah. what I've heard. Genie yeah. Plus is a whole other rant. Yeah. I, and I love Disney, but I mean, yeah. so many rants. Can oh, yeah. That's why she's here everybody. today. <laughs> um, so I think that was basically it that we want to share about that first trip. Um, then we had two weeks in between, um, and if you guys want to see a little, like a little recap of what I did with work in between, got to hang out with Ed Sheeran, got to do a few interviews, I'll link that stuff down below, and then my best friend got married, so that was a whole big thing, and then we went to Walt Disney World for the 50th, and it was just amazing how many people we ran into from literally the airport, mm-hmm. a very tiny airport that we fly yeah. out of, like at the gate, to coming home like it was just it was Mm -hmm. incredible so I do want to say quickly if you guys were there and you saw us and we looked busy or you stopped us we didn't have time I'm so sorry but it was a very you guys know it was a chaotic trip I mean there was so much going on my family was there my friends were there I had some like work stuff going on too so it was crazy so don't think that I wasn't grateful to see you guys I hope that when things quiet down I get to see you guys again in the park never feel Like, you can't stop us. I know some of you said, I saw you and your sister walking around, but I didn't want to bother you. You're not bothering us. If we can't chat, we can't chat. But I would love to just, like, meet you, even if it is for a couple of seconds. So I do want to say thank you to anybody who did stop us. That really meant a lot. Um, So, yeah, the first day that we were there, we had lunch quick, and then we went to Disney Springs because the way they've been (laughs) releasing the 50th merch is crazy. So we wanted to go to World of Disney before the crowds really mm-hmm. picked up for the weekend. Um, and we did get quite a few things, like the ears. Um, I think by now the hall will be up, which I know a lot of you have been asking for. Thank you for your patience. I'll put that up in the eye and down below. Um, but we were very lucky. They released mm-hmm. the ears that day. And it was so amazing because they had so many. We went through so many. By that night, gone. gone. And that seems to be the trend with a lot of the merch. And from what I'm hearing is that they're trying to restock, but it's not necessarily Disney's fault for why they're not. It's because of shipping. And that's with, like, food, everything around the country is having shipment issues. So just be patient with them. Some stuff will not be restocked because it's limited edition. We just don't know what stuff that is at this point. And it feels like every time you blink, there's new things being added. But it did feel to me that that was the focus of the 50th, was the merch. And don't get me wrong, we're rocking 50th merch. We like the merch. Mm -hmm. But it seems like that was a big... Thing, that entire trip also with the Remy's Ratatouille Adventure merch like you had to wait on these virtual cues for everything and it kind of takes the fun out of it a little bit absolutely I feel like it's become so merch focused I was joking around calling it the merch anniversary because Seriously. that's what it was it was yeah. all about the merch and I mean I get it but at the same time like come on like yeah. $90 for a spear jersey waiting all day in a virtual yeah. queue like What's the point? Yeah, I mean, I, it's like nothing is that nice to me. Yeah, like 
I don't know. It just takes away, I think, from what the park is designed to be. It does. <laughs> it's a lot of the stuff is merchandise focused. Not just the 50th, but like with Remy's Ratatouille mm-hmm. Adventure. I mean, there was a whole virtual queue. We were lucky enough after the weekend, I think yeah. it was, we walked right into it. But like, still, it's just, and I, I can go on a whole rant about mm-hmm. people with the merch. But um, I mean, we do like a lot of the merch. You've seen the haul. I like the merch. But I'm not going to spend my whole day waiting mm-hmm. on on a line. And thank you to my friends who are watching this video who did do the virtual queues and got in and picked up stuff for me. I am so, so grateful and thankful about that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just wild. Yeah. So before we get into the actual 50th, the, the second day we saw the preview for Harmonious, which we knew about because it got leaked and we were not the only ones. I mean, people had like pool towels and they were sitting it was and ridiculous. waiting and it was just really obnoxious mm-hmm. to like find a spot and then people were really nasty about mm-hmm. it um we watched in morocco which illuminations no matter where you watched around world showcase you had a great view and like you could hear the music you could see the fireworks this i feel like there are select areas that you probably would enjoy it more from mm-hmm. and now this is the only time we saw harmonious i even filmed the whole thing we did a little recap yeah i have not put it up because it's terrible it's terrible and not because of my camera quality or anything <laughs> it was not it was a, a great location. location and it was heartbreaking because these barges we've been seeing these for trips and trips and trips now so you expect oh it's gonna be amazing it wasn't. It's kind of like World of Color where in Disneyland where you have to be in select areas to really appreciate it. If you can't see the main screen, you miss yeah. 90% of the show. Yeah, you have the, the the big, the like Oreo and then the tacos, it looks like. And we could see some of like the, the taco-shaped ones. But then like what they do, for me, the fact that you can see them at all times and it's not like Illuminations where they bring them out and put them away... I was expecting them to do more. It's still impressive what they can do, but... Mm. Is it, though? I don't know. The thing is, too, I haven't seen it from, like, the central location, so maybe it is, like, amazing. Music-wise, I... I, Okay. Before you just... Before you get to that, I liked the music. I thought there was this one part where I'll call it the Paris section. It was very Alan Menken, like, Beauty and the Beast, Hunchback. I got chills for that. I liked that. Um, I did. Enj- I actually appreciated for Epcot that if you're gonna have like a very Disney song that it incorporated the language of that country that the movie is featured in. But it and I love Disney, but it was a little weird to me that it was like classic Disney stuff or just like Disney songs in Epcot. It had nothing to do with Epcot whatsoever. Yeah, I mean the the, the nationalities and that stuff. is such a stretch yeah. to try to make it fit Epcot. I mean, it just had nothing to do yeah. with Epcot. The music, like, I understand what you were trying to do with the music and what they were trying to accomplish. Yeah. It failed. It failed. It was not good. Um, I just, ugh, I did not like it at all. And at we all. we loved Illuminations. And then we weren't, like, heartbroken when they got rid of Illuminations. It had been around for a while. And Epcot Forever was a really great placeholder. But they have been talking about Harmonious for years. So I was expecting a little bit more. Yeah, especially with the barges there. Um <sighs> They're such an eyesore during the day. They're an eyesore during the day. They were supposed to post a thing and it was supposed to do waterfalls during the day so it didn't look as like metally in the middle of the water. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. They didn't do that. It's so focused on water shooting out of barges. Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. It's awful. My other gripe with it. Oh boy. Is the music selections that they chose really heavily focused on newer movies. Not as heavily focused as Enchantment. as Enchantment, but pretty heavily focused on newer movies. See, and I don't the think older that. movies that they did pick, it was like, okay, I get that you're trying to do like Epcot themes, but then you had some pretty random selections. I mean, that. like we only saw it the one, so I'm thinking Circle of Life was a big one, Hunchback, Beauty and the Beast, like Mulan. So like, I think there was a lot more like familiar Disney stuff that was in there. No, so, okay, so. So, sure. We'll yeah, do the caveat more familiar here. familiar than enchantment. Right. So, my sister has not seen Princess and the Frog, Coco, uh, Soul, mm-hmm. uh, Moana. So, these all these movies are very heavily yeah. focused in uh, Harmonious and Enchantment. So, for my sister, she gets annoyed because she hasn't seen them. Now, you probably I know it's so them. easy to go on and yeah. watch them. They've been around for a couple yeah. years now. Like, I get it. I just don't feel like crying anymore. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> I get that. I do get that. But also, like, I feel like you should watch them so you can, like, appreciate it. Yeah, I mean... And, like, the, the thing that I think about is, you know, Disney's, like, heavily focused towards kids. So, like, these newer movies are what kid. This is their classic Disney to them. But is Epcot World Showcase no, really focused no, towards children? No, but I'm just no, saying I'm just the saying thing in general with saying. Disney. Um, no, it's really not. But... Yeah, I mean, it's a whole rant and a tangent yeah. I could go off on. Yes, I should watch the new movie. Should. I get that, absolutely. But I shouldn't have to not enjoy an entire show because I haven't seen a couple movies. Mm -hmm. The fireworks themselves? Non-existent. <laughs> I remember people's biggest gripe about Happily Ever After when that started um, was that it took a couple of minutes for there to be fireworks. I feel like that, that happened This was like almost four it, yeah, mo minutes it was. without fireworks. It definitely it was, was. way too long. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say that the first night we were there was the last night of Happily Ever After. That was a big thing. We got to hang out with Betty, um, which was awesome because we saw the final, our final night for mm -hmm. Epcot Forever with her. So our final for Happily Ever After, which was really special. Um, and that was the most amount of people I've seen in a very long time. It was packed. packed. And packed. it was not the final night. It was the second to last mm -hmm. night. Um, and we were on Main Street. That was like the first time in a while we waited for fireworks. But for me, I love that show so much. And it was so special that I definitely wanted to see it one more time. I know you're still like bitter about Wishes. I was a huge Wishes person. Wishes will always hold a special place in my heart. However, Happily Ever After, so much better than Enchantment. Happily Ever After is another thing that's like an experience. The music, you can't even match the music of Happily Ever. From the moment it starts, mm -hmm. that's starting to the end. Um, I know we've talked about this before that you loved Wishes because it was the fireworks and it didn't focus on the projections. Right. I loved it because it was a fireworks show. But Wish. this was the first time that you really had a good spot for Happily Ever After too. Did that change your, your vision of like... No, I mean, there were so many people. It was really hard yeah. to see projections on the castle. And, and a was. huge thank you to my sister because I wanted to enjoy the final night. And she's like, I'll film it for you. So she did film yeah. it. So that was really sweet of her. Um, I do like Happily Ever After. I just don't like that you miss part of the show if you can't be right. directly center on Main Street. Right. Whereas like with Wishes and having it be a fireworks show, mm -hmm. you can see from anywhere. And I really appreciate that because yeah. sometimes you just want to walk through the park while it's going on and you can still enjoy it. Which we, we've done that for Happily Ever yes. After. Um, yeah, so it was really nice to see the final night and Tinkerbell flew and it was I it was will great. say that I felt more camaraderie with everyone in the park for that than I did for the 50th. Yep. The moment the music starts, the place went nuts. Yeah. Afterwards went nuts. I feel right. I like you. you had diehards there yeah. to see Happily Ever After finish coming together to watch this, like, you know, um, milestone mm -hmm. of it ending. Like, it was everyone that was there because they really, truly enjoyed something. Yeah. For the 50th, I feel that you had people going to say they enjoy it, but are really there for the merchandise and to resell it. Yeah. She's, you're not entirely wrong on that. Um, before we get to that, because I think it's really important to explain what happened the next day. So the next day, I was so fortunate. They were doing a big media event down there and we were supposed to go, but with the pandemic, they only made it like, Florida TV, a local thing. Totally understandable. Um, but someone I've talked about many times on this channel, Jane, our wonderful like media partner, she actually invited me to the press uh, party, which is the night before the 50th. And of course, as she told me this, I'm like crying. It was, oh, and I couldn't take anybody. I just, I went um, to cover it for my radio station. And Again, night before the 50th, they shut down Magic Kingdom. We had this like really cool dessert thing in Tomorrowland. I'm gonna link if I have the press party video up already down below. If not, it's coming soon. It was really cool. There was like celebrity, I mean, Joey Fatone and his family are right there when you walk in. It was like a really cool thing. You, had, you didn't really have a lot of diehard Disney people. I mean, I was there, but then I could see like, okay, Bob Weiss is over there. Like you could see some people. Um, and then after when the park was entirely cleared, they escorted us to the castle and you knew something was going on because they had all these TVs and you can actually see this on the Disney Parks blog live stream, but I was there for it, which was so cool. Um, and they had Christina Aguilera come out and perform. Then they had Bob Chapik and Bob Iger, who Bob Iger is someone that we both just admire so much. And I, our lives have been affected by him and what he's brought to the company. And that's not being dramatic, it's true. I know so many of you can relate too. Um, and they did this like rededication thing and then they set off the fireworks and then they had enchantment. So I had 
an amazing view for enchantment right there in front of the castle that will probably never happen again. So I got a chance to do this and there was other things they had going on too. If I hadn't done that the night before, I probably would have been very disappointed by the 50th. I think, and now keep in mind guys, if you were at the 50th and you're mad because they didn't do big shows or have celebrities, I think a lot of it has to do with the union rules because it's not just Disney, it's all their actors and everybody in the union that with COVID times. So you can blame COVID for quite a few things why they didn't do a lot for the 50th, but also you can't. Um, yeah, I know she has so much to say about this. <laughs> so I really thought before I was doing press stuff that Bob Iger and Bob Chabuk, um were going to do something at the 50th that morning and a rededication ceremony because I've seen stuff they've done in Disneyland and even on the 25th and the 35th of Epcot. We were at the mm -hmm. 35th of Epcot and there was Imagineers there. They did a whole big thing in front of Spaceship Earth. They did not do that. The thing that they had in the morning, if, if Good Morning America wasn't there filming in the morning, they might have not even done a couple of mm -hmm. characters in the front. Um, and everyone was teasing when we walked in on the 50th, the rededication ceremony, rededication ceremony. It was a voiceover of Jeff Vale saying what Roy had said. That was the only representation of Walt and Roy that entire day. It was terrible. I... I'm a huge Disney history person. And if you're like, if you go to an anniversary party, a big wedding anniversary, it's their 50th anniversary, you're gonna see pictures from their, their wedding and when they started and everything. They did not have that. How did they have all that stuff? In merchandise, mm -hmm. in the vault collection. Yep. That's how they had that representation. Yep. So that was a little heartbreaking to see. I think the cavalcade they have, Magic is Calling, guys, is one of my new favorite songs and I use it for everything. That was cool. That's going to run the entire 18 months. The only thing that was that day only, they gave you a really cool commemorative park map when you walked in and they had merch. That was the only thing that was specific to that day. And when you walked out, they did give you a really pretty um, castle picture too. That was it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've talked a lot. You chime in a little bit. You can say, you know, Sure, it's the times we're in, but that will only get you so, so far. far for the 50th. You don't need to do special elaborate shows or a parade, which, let's face it, the crowds that were there anyway, you it was a parade. You could have done a full-on parade. You could have done a full-on parade. You could have done a full-on show. Yep. The crowds, you can't blame that. Mm, yeah, it's not an excuse. When we were young, when it was the 25th anniversary, but we were there for that celebration period, and they had the Remember the Magic Parade, which... Even though we were young, we remember so much. It's one of our like first mm -hmm. big memories yeah. of Disney, too. And it it, it was a song that yeah. everyone knows. I mean, there's merchandise yeah. to this day of it. It yeah. was iconic. I get you didn't want the crowds, but then why have the special cavalcade? Why have the special cavalcade? Why debut new shows that are going to draw crowds and end yep. happily ever after to bring on a new fireworks? This is not when surprising both to Both of those events are going to draw a huge crowd. And you know how many people you're letting in with the reservation yes, system. You so know. you should be prepared you for know. it. You should be able to handle the crowd. If you can't handle the crowd, don't invite the people in the park. Yeah. If your technology is not going to be able to support the crowd in the park. You have to explain that, yeah. You need to limit the capacity. So explain what you mean by the technology. All of the technology. You could not get on a virtual queue. The Wi-Fi was overloaded and the system shut down. You, you could mobile not order food. mobile order food, which is how they're allowing people to order food. It's mm -hmm. mobile order. If you, people can't get food in the park, there's going to be even longer lines for things like popcorn and people waiting three hours for a popcorn bucket mm -hmm. because it's their only food that they can get because you can't mobile order. I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. No excuse for it whatsoever. As someone being in IT, like there is yeah. no excuse for it. I mean, we made the most of it that day. We actually, and it was so hot that day. We left the park, we went to Grand Floridian and I got there and actually got to see Philip Lawrence who um, he wrote the music for Enchantment. Um, and so I had seen it the night before. So I was talking to him about that. And like, you know, he had the same idea cause it was like, it was so hot and crowded in the park and you couldn't get food. If you mobile ordered, it was like four hours after. So we did that and then for dinner, we were at the Contemporary. Um, but I get people didn't want to leave the park that day. It was amazing to me that with the crowd, there were virtually no waits for the attractions. I get all the opening day attractions. That was really cool to mm -hmm. do that. But, but because people weren't there yeah. for that, they were there to buy merchandise and then... And they made announcements. We didn't hear many of them, but I've seen quite a few vlogs where they made announcements where you can check out the merch that day. They didn't say anything about Roy and Walt. It was mm -hmm. your merchandise. Yep. It was terrible. Yeah. 
It was that was very. You don't get to fifty years yeah. without the history. Yep. So to not even acknowledge it yeah. was pretty terrible. Yeah, that that was disappointing to me. There's and the you can't blame COVID on that. No, you can't. You could have done something yep. special. Mm-hmm. They could have done instead of having the vault collection there because the vault collection is. I think there's a location in Epcot and Hollywood Studios now, and there's definitely one in Disney Springs in the Marketplace Co-op. They could have made that a 50th, like, museum. Mm-hmm. Like, I get we have one man's dream in Hollywood Studios, but they could have done something there. Yeah. Um, I will say the character costumes that they launched, love him. Um, and I think it's really cool that they had, and we saw Goofy. How many resorts did we see Goofy oh gosh, in that outfit out? We went to. Yeah, I, I, we were staying at Old Key West, and you could get so close to him. That was such a nice feeling. Um, and I am excited that they're bringing back the character interactions for our next trip. But I get you can't have all these characters out. I mean, would it have been cool to see 50 characters out for the 50th? Absolutely. There's still so much more you could do. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. it was a little heartbreaking. It we're, With all that said, we are so grateful to have been there mm-hmm. on the 50th. We were there for a moment in history. Could it have been more special? Of course, but it could have been worse too at the same time. Um, and it was great to see like a bunch of people. One of the coolest moments for me that day was we went on the Country Bears and that was the hypest crowd I've ever <laughs> seen for the Country Bears <laughs> really because was. they turned 50 that day too. So everyone was having a great time. And that's one of those attractions sometimes that could be overlooked. So that was really cool that mm-hmm. everyone was so into it. Um, and then we went to go see Enchantment at night. <laughs> this was the first time. What, I have to your laugh. Phone? Did you take a picture of what I it said? I did because Main Street was actually full. Can you can you and read they, what it said on the app? Because yeah. my Disney Experience notification no, I, popped I up on her phone about the fireworks. And keep in mind, this was like at least an hour before fireworks. We knew Main Street was going to be packed for the fireworks. People from the moment we walked in at nine o'clock in the morning on Main Street were already camped out for the fireworks. And that's great. You want to be there for one of the first showings. Cool. If you want to see the first showing, though, I actually have the announcement saying the first showing. That's in that press video. Um, Okay. So it says, important information. All Disney Enchantment Fireworks viewing locations on Main Street USA are full. We recommend watching from Frontierland, Fantasyland, or Tomorrowland. Yes. So we watched from... Fantasyland. Which we've seen Happily Ever After back there before, like when we were waiting online for Moonlight Magic to see Meg, Mm -hmm. Pain and Panic, and it was great. We have like a special memory there. So we knew you could see fireworks from either side. You're just in the middle of it and have to look back and forth. Um, What I will say, the cool thing, it wasn't crowded back there, Mm -hmm. and there was a photo pass person back there. So we got a really cool picture of our family and the fireworks going off. Fireworks going off and then holding a sign that actually had the date of the 50th on it. So like, I'm really grateful that we watched from that spot. Especially because the line to take a picture with that on Main Street, they kept closing it off all day. It was so long. So it was really cool. And that's like a once in a lifetime moment and a memory. And my one thing that I will say that is very positive about Enchantment is it's actually a fireworks yes. show. So you could see the fireworks from where we were and still enjoy it. Yeah. And there was a couple of nods to wishes in it. There was. So and she was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. To me, if you guys have seen Disneyland fireworks shows, it's it kind of reminds me of some of that. Maybe not like the Disneyland Forever fireworks, which was their 60th fireworks and were amazing. Best Disneyland fireworks I've ever seen because some of the Disneyland fireworks are... Mm. We've seen the holiday ones where we're like, wait, that's it? It's like four minutes long and we're like, there's no finale. Um, The music, I think the You Are the Magic part, that, shout outs to Philip Lawrence again for that, was great, that Mm -hmm. part. But in between, there was no real story. There was no story, no overarching theme that connects everything. It was great that they used some songs like Just Around the River Bend. That hasn't really been but in it a fireworks like show. But it was like five seconds of that. Yeah. And then it was all new movies. Talk about it. I yeah. actually went on a blog and one of the posts said that it was actually just an advertisement for Disney+. Plus <laughs> Because like you had a lot of Moana on mm-hmm. there, which I love that movie. I, I think my sister would too if she saw it. Um, but I mean, it's so true because now if I want to enjoy the show, I'm going to go on Disney Plus and I'm going to watch yeah. all these movies so I actually can understand what's going on. So, I mean, I thought that was hilarious, um, but it's also very true. Does it does it work for you, though? Like, do you now have the urge to watch these movies? Because No. no? Okay. Well, no. You're, you're different. No. Um, honestly, like, as much as Happily Ever After, like, wasn't my favorite, um, 
Is it because you were bitter about wishes that it wasn't your yeah, favorite? Yeah, absolutely. I'm telling you, the also, emotional though, heartstrings. Yeah, I will say that Ooh. there was emotion in Happily Ever After. She cried. And I'm going to put that clip in here where she cried after the, the final showing of Happily Ever After. Thank you. Happily I'm not a big like princess like love story. We're total like, opposites, even though we're twins. So uh, that's where like happily ever is just kind of like, all right, well let's make it something else <laughs> for yeah. me. But I mean, okay. like wishes is like you know a dream. Go after what you want. That's still happily ever yeah, after too. But happily ever after is more focused I feel personally on like the love side of it you've got the whole Hercules thing then you've got pirates in there and Let's Scar just say, I said and I more alright whatever that's a whole other but thing but anyway so Enchantment yeah. really didn't do it for me that way um, I will say though that I was really glad that it wasn't as focused on projections mm -hmm. um, now I didn't actually see it from Main Street at all so I can't speak to what's going on right. on Main Street but we did watch from the Polynesian Beach yes our, one of our final so nights. So we could finally see it head on without having to watch the crowd uh, in Main Street and have to deal with all that. And I enjoyed it. I couldn't yeah. see really the projections, but I could see but it But you like, didn't need on. to see the projections. But you didn't need to. It didn't yeah. add... And it didn't take away. So, yeah. like, for me, I was just really happy to get a fireworks show again. I mean, I saw it with the projections that first night, and I really enjoyed it, but it didn't... The first time I saw Happily Ever After... I bawled my eyes out, and I will link that video down below. That's I when think I did press the stuff. music and happily ever after just oh, got God. you. A you little get goosebumps from the minute it starts. I don't care if you yeah. like princes, you get goosebumps. Yeah. Um, this one, you're like, ooh, okay, but you're not like, oh my God, that was what they should have done yeah. for the fiftieth. Yeah, they ha they should have had not, Walt. They, they should have had something with Walt. In they there. should not have released it on the fiftieth. Correct. If this was just replacing Happily Ever After, I think maybe... I still would have been annoyed. Yeah, I would have been annoyed, but I don't think it would have had, like, as much yeah. as, like, oh, you're, you know... With that said, neither of us hate Enchantment. We don't want that to mm -hmm. be the impression you're getting. I enjoyed Enchantment. I liked Happily Ever After better, if I'm being honest. Agreed. I like Enchantment better than Harmonious. Agreed. I think even if I see Harmonious head-on, I'm still going to feel that way about Enchantment. That's just more, like, Disney and fitting with the castle yeah. to me, mm -hmm. personally. I just wish there was a bit more classics. Yeah, I would agree. All right, so we don't want to we don't want to ramble about all of that, <laughs> but I do want to talk about these beacon of light shows that they have, the beacon of magic. So we saw the spaceship Earth the first night that they released it, which guys, I totally missed it because standing right over yonder near us was Josh Diamaro, uh, Bob Weiss who put it all together, a couple of other Imagineers, Bob Chapek, and Bob Iger. So I was watching them watch it, and that was a moment. Because when do you ever get to see the people who worked on mm -hmm. it watch their product for the first time with a crowd? So that was really cool. But then we watched it another night, and I loved that with Spaceship Earth. I was like, I enjoyed that more than Harmonious. So I would agree, actually, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. It just was more Epcot to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're watching it and you see the monorails go by, they have these lights that correspond to their color for the 50th that go around, too, which is really cool. And that's like so futuristic Epcot mm -hmm. to me. I love that. I do want to say something about Epcot in general. They now no longer have Future World, and they call mm. it The Neighborhoods. When you walk in, it is not that iconic Epcot music. The only part that has that is near the land, which might even be down now that they started the Moana construction. I don't know. But... It... I know. I know. That was rough for me. Um, and I know you guys are probably like, what are you talking about? But if you grew up going in the 90s and mm -hmm. early 2000s, you know, even you know. 10 years ago. Yeah, if you know, you know. It's like pirate water. If you know, you know. So... 
that was a little yeah. a little rough. Um, you know, World Showcase hasn't really been affected by any of that, except for the stupid barges. Um, but yeah, then we went into the creation shop at Epcot too, which replaced Ma- the new mouse gear. It's better than the temporary mouse gear they had. But again, mouse gear is another one of those things. It was one of our favorite stores. It was just so iconic to us. And now it's very different. It's like a department store, in my opinion. Yeah, there's not too many Disney touches in it. It's very bright. You can definitely see stuff. I like this how they section things off, the variety of stuff. Um, but it, it's like it's, the new world of Disney to me. Like, I'm not a fan of the changes. I don't like it. And it's going to take that. time to get used to. Did I still buy stuff there? Mm-hmm. Um, will I buy things there in the future? Most likely. Um, some of the, the new Epcot merch was a little funky um but again stuff was selling out so we haven't seen all of it um i did we did check out the virtual pay there for me it was fine well, wait, i was able to do one two three but you couldn't we checked out no we didn't because i couldn't get you it couldn't. on my app i have the most updated phone i have the yeah the software system yeah. i get uh my disney experience no problem so for the mobile to not work for me and then work for other people and my phone's so much like, older than hers too so it just, yeah it, it was weird and then to try to ask a cast member for help was just i think i like i understand technology yeah. you might not know the answer but you could could be a little the, the cast members that week were not like tr- like the true cast member experience we're used to i don't know if they were under pressure for the 50th or people are being rude to them about things selling out or there's just the crowd or if it's coming from management i don't really know but the, the cast mm-hmm. members we, we always see yeah. we're all we're so great but some of the other ones it was like you know how in disneyland when you see a cast member and some of them just act like it's a job to them you don't really get that in walt disney world as much it was kind That's of like was. Disneyland touches there. And I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying it was I, not. I can sympathize with everything they're going through. Yeah, she, my sister worked in Walt Disney World. So she gets it. I understand the crowds and just the people being rude. I mean, there was, I got yelled at every single day that I worked there. So, yeah. I mean, I get it. So, yeah. I mean, just, but I also understand that. Not to take it out on the guests. Yeah, that's that's an <laughs> so. important thing. One of our friends, or one of my friends, I should say, went there for the very first time. He went to Magic Kingdom the day or two before the 50th, and he was like, I have heard so many people talk about the customer service, the guest experience at Disney. He's like, I did not feel that, and that was heartbreaking to me to hear. That was so heartbreaking to hear. So I'm hoping maybe his next trip, if he goes again, it will be different. Um, I don't want you to think that we're being super negative about this stuff because we had both our trips were so wonderful and magical and we can't wait to go back. Mm -hmm. And yes, we bought merch. I mean, you were very well behaved. You bought like Mm -hmm. two things the trip. I did not. I bought like two things every day at least. Um, So I'll link all those videos, those hauls and stuff. And there's probably another one or two to come uh, in the, in the, comment section down below the description box below rather thank you guys so much for joining us we would love to know what your thoughts are on any of these things and we will talk to you really soon i'm melissa k and i'm christina k have Have a a disney Disney day. day